What's up, everyone? James Murphy here, back with another episode of what is new in Python 3.9. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, the relaxed restrictions on decorators that were just introduced. So first off, let's go over a little bit about just what decorators are. Um, so suppose we have some kind of expensive function. This is a classic example of when you might want to use a decorator. Uh, the decorator that we're going to be writing first is to time the function. Now, I could, in my main program, uh, just start computing things. I could say start is time dot perf counter, uh, and of course I'll have to import time and end is time dot perf counter again and then I could look at end minus start and so on and so forth and print that out to tell me how much time it took. Uh, but there's a different way that I could do it which is to ex sort of extract this code out into a function. So let's define the timed function which is going to take in a function and sort of modify it. So I took in this function f, and I'm going to define the timed version of f. And it's going to take you know, whatever args and keyword args um, in order to um, be as general as possible. And then I'm just going to do what I was, going, uh, what I was doing in the, the main down there. I'm just going to do that up here in this function. So what is the timed version of f going to do? It's going to compute a start value. And then it will capture the value from f by calling it and passing in those args. And then we'll compute the elapsed time. By subtracting off uh, the current perf counter from the start. Then I'll print out that value and then return whatever value f was going to return. So if you were to call this function timed f, it would act just like f, uh, except it would print out the amount of time that it took um, to do the call to f. Um, so now that I've defined this timed f, I'll go ahead and return it. So the way that we use this decorator, es essentially what's going to be happening is I've defined my expensive f. Let me just reformat here. I've defined my expensive f, and then I'm just going to pass in the expensive f to this timed function. So you'll see um, now, if I get rid of this stuff and run the program, then I see that it took 0.43 seconds uh, in order to compute this expensive f, which happens to be the sum of squares of the first 1 million integers. Um, but with decorators, we can actually uh, do this with a little bit more condensed notation uh, where I don't need to be rewriting this expensive f out. So instead, I'll use the decorator, and I just say at timed. So I actually wasn't even aware of this restriction, but it turns out that in Python 3.8, um, what could go here after the at sign was pretty limited. Uh, you could put a function like timed here, or you could put something, um, you know, like my library annotation, um, and then some kind of function call here, you know, is cool. So that would be allowed, but I wouldn't be able to, say, access a dictionary um, or a list if my was a variable or something like that. Um, so it was just limited to basically dotted names and function calls. Uh, so with the new syntax, um, this has been um, this restriction has been relaxed. So now, um, in this uh, place here after the at sign, you can put any expression that say you could put um, in an if or a while. 
Oh, and just to run the program again, you can see that um, it does the same thing as before. Now, as I mentioned before, I didn't really even know that this restriction on decorator syntax existed before. And that's kind of because I didn't really have a good use case for it. Why would I ever need more than, say, just a basic function call um, or maybe dotted function name um, in where I'm going to use a decorator? Uh, so here's a really good example where you would probably be better off using um, the expanded syntax than not. So let's suppose that we have a button class. You know, we're writing some kind of GUI, so we have a button class. And our button, of course, is going to do something when you click it. And just by default, we'll just say that it prints out, you clicked me. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a decorator in the button class that allows you to register your button to do something else um, other than print you clicked me. So we'll say define register on clicked and then we'll take in a function f which you want it to do when the button is clicked. So all it's going to do is assign the onClicked method to this function f. And then remember, since this is supposed to be a decorator, uh, it should be modifying the function f. Uh, but in our case, we don't want to modify f. We're just going to do nothing to it and return it back. And this example is actually very similar to something that you might see in a real GUI code base, uh, which is very simplified for the purposes of this demo, of course. So now let's say that we have some buttons. We'll make a list of, I don't know how many buttons. We'll say button for score in range. Let's just make 10 buttons. And now uh, at runtime, we'll go ahead and click all the buttons. So for button in buttons, we'll just simulate button on clicked. So now, if I run this, we'll just see you clicked me 10 times. So where does the decorator come in? Suppose that you know the third button, for whatever reason, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to print hello. So I'll say print hello, which just prints hello. And now I'll use my new decorator. So I'll say add, but if I only want the third button to do this, then I have to access it through the list buttons. So I can say buttons at index three, and now just use the register on clicked um, decorator. So we can see if you run it, now the button at index three prints hello instead of you clicked me. And Python 3.2, Eight, though, I wouldn't be able to have this bracket three in there. That would not be allowed syntax. So if I wanted to do it in 3.8, I would probably have to um, you know, make a temporary variable button equals buttons of three, and then use just button here in this place. And you can see that indeed that works, but number one, it's a little bit more cumbersome to have this temporary temporary variable. And also, now I have this unwanted temporary variable uh, polluting namespace. So I definitely wouldn't want that to be exposed or exported, something like that. Um, so in this case, it's actually much uh, preferred to use this now allowed syntax um, where you can have any expression after the at sign instead of just uh, a dotted name and maybe a function call. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'm going to be continuing these videos, going into more detail on new features that were introduced in Python 3.9,
and probably also some other just interesting things in Python. Additionally, if you're someone who's looking to learn Python, I'm actually offering live online nine-week full-fledged courses um, starting from scratch um, on Python. So if you would be interested in that, go ahead and look in the description. I've got a link there to a Google form where you can uh, drop me your contact info and I'll let you know when there are these courses uh, available.